We, we went through uh, some, you know, a, a really challenging um, soul searching experience this past spring, yeah. uh, um, which um, ended up in your version of the anthem mm -hmm. um, against that, uh, that Montreal. whole, that whole thing. I, you know, I, I relive it quite often actually, because it's only a couple of months ago now, right? My neighbor said, Don Amaro should be singing the anthem. And I texted you and I said, Hey, they just yelled. I should sing the anthem. And I've sang the anthem a couple of times at this point. And you said, we can make that happen. And, uh, and then, so, you know, I'm excited about the possibility of singing the anthem at a playoff game. And, and then uh, 48 hours later, we heard about the news about the 215 kids they found in Cantaloupe's BC and uh, who suffered at the hands of, you know, uh, the, the, the life of being in residential school. And then that altered a bit of our conversation about the anthem. And, you know, we started seeing up, upside down flags and, and led to you and I kind of saying, what's the right, what's the right step here? And I know that because the Jets organization is already doing a lot of work in this area, um, that wrestling that I felt, I think that as an organization, you were feeling the same yeah, very much so. And I think we were both fortunate that we were able to lean on another friendship that we have with Kevin Chief, who mm -hmm. has been, um, uh, you know, just a, a dear friend over many, many years. And uh, yeah, just trying to sort out what, you know, what's the right thing to do. I think it all caught us uh, so off guard. And we were coming off this celebration of, of uh, finally beating the Oilers and, and uh, you know, now you're going into a series against uh, the Montreal Canadians and, you know, there's ordinarily a lot of excitement and I think just the whole country got stopped dead in their tracks. Mm -hmm. And so it was difficult to figure out what the right solution would be to that first game. Uh, but credit to you, uh, you know, I think it had its intended effect mm -hmm. you know, that, that's a moment that i already know long into old age for me i'll remember that because i think that was a real catalyst for a lot of really deep conversations that have been had up till now and that we're continuing to have hopefully for long into the future now the, the jets as an organization i would say you know this 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 term reconciliation uh, the organization here from my perspective has been doing a lot of work in that area for a long time and long before the trc was even out it started with a desire just to um, make the game more accessible. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to grow up, play the game. My kids grew up playing the game. But as I, as I watched their experiences and I, I coached them through those years, I, it was easy to uh, understand that the game had become far less accessible. You know, mm -hmm. we, we claim it as our national sport, but how do we make the game of hockey more accessible? And, and that led us down a path uh, that uh, with Kevin Chief, who had started an organization called the uh, called WASAC, the Winnipeg a Aboriginal Sport Achievement Center. We had this desire, but really didn't understand the pathways in. We created this program through the public school system uh, in schools that you know the province determined to be underserved. Um, we just we, we started with this very small, modest program of 25 kids. And um, the year before COVID, I think we had 900 kids in the program. And, and because of the, the socioeconomic uh, circumstance of those schools, you know, the vast majority of those kids, not all, but a, a good deal of those kids are, are of Indigenous ethnicity, lots of new Canadians as well. And that sort of started us on, on that path, right? Mm -hmm. And we were just trying to make the game accessible to kids that weren't able to play it. And mm. in our, in our community, uh, regrettably, a number of those kids are indigenous. From my perspective, and I can't speak for other NHL teams out there, but I've, I, I get this sense and you're, you're my home team. It seems to me like, like this organization is a leader and, you know, oftentimes corporations, you know, big businesses tend to sort of tackle the land acknowledgement first. And that seems like a first step. And I think you guys are well beyond that. And one of the things I thought was really exciting to see is an NHL team with an indigenous logo can you tell me how that was born? One of the things we uh, started to do years ago um, was um, a follow your dreams night where we would actually bring uh, a large number of kids down from Northern Manitoba for the weekend uh, to catch a game. This is before our, our return to the NHL. And it just sort of took on a life of its own where it became sort of a cel celebration night for the indigenous community at a game. And so then more recently, uh, we, we decided to take it to a, another level and, and Kevin int introduced us to a young woman by the name of, uh, of Letitia Spence, who we asked to, um, sort of come on board for a period of time and, and indigenize 
our two logos. Hmm. And um, it was a remarkable process, you know, to, to observe. And, and, and she came up with these two um, really, really cool logos. And mm -hmm. so in fact, you, you could almost see them through the glass mm -hmm. here, ironically, yeah. or coincidentally, but um, on that, that, that game night, we, you know, we, we wear those, uh, those jerseys in warm up, and uh, I'm hoping one day we'll be able to wear them, you know, during a game and the league has some uh, restrictions around what kind of, you, of course, you know, yeah. how often you can change your uniform up, et cetera. But um, it's been selling like crazy, which is great mm -hmm. because Wasac, who I mentioned earlier, you know, been the beneficiary of those proceeds and it, it, it you know, you see people wearing it with pride and not, and not just indigenous people. And there was a moment um, uh, the first year we did it and we invited this, this young choir to sing the anthem. Um, and they did it in Ojibwe and, and, hmm. but we have this shout out during our anthem where everybody screams true North, true North yeah. and, and on cue, everybody did it. And the applause that those kids got, hmm. um, still sort of, you know, gives you a jolt, hmm. uh, when you think about it, it was really a meaningful, uh, event in our, in our chronology. So yeah. it, now the trick is how do you, you know, how do you make it a little bit better every year that that, mm -hmm. that's our challenge now i don't doubt you guys will find a way yeah well we're gonna try <laughs>